Hey there, this video is about how to use the Income Importer app that FreshBooks has to import your Stripe transactions that you might be uh, selling stuff on via a different platform. This is not the video that talks about how you can use uh, connect your Stripe to your FreshBooks account to get paid within FreshBooks to have those invoices paid. You know, like when, when you set up FreshBooks, you can choose WePay, Stripe, I believe PayPal as well. That's not what this is. This is if you have like a shop or a store or if you're selling on uh, a hop-in conference platform or Teachable or something like that and you have Stripe to take those payments, this is how you get that information into FreshBooks. I'm recording this intro after I made the meat of the video, um, so I hope the intro kind of lines up, so give me grace if it doesn't, um, but follow along. I'm going to walk you through the nitty-gritty details of how all those little Stripe transactions can get into your FreshBooks and then how you have to handle the Stripe fees and the Stripe refunds, which is a little bit more manual process. But this video is going to help you get it right and reach out if you have questions. Oh, and don't forget to hit subscribe and that bell so you get a notification every time a video comes out every Tuesday. All right, let's dive into the income importer and how to handle Stripe. So inside of your FreshBooks account, come to the gear icon, go to apps and integrations. You'll come to this page right here. Income importer is at the top for me. At the time of this recording, I do think that they had just released a different type of app store. So do whatever you need to do to, to get to the, the app store to, to hit that income importer integration. I'm going to allow. So for my purposes, I need to connect Stripe. I'll hit connect. If anyone watching this has Etsy or Square and would like to get some help, um, I would love to have a client that needs services on those that I can um, help on the income importer for Etsy and for Square as well. So reach out. I, I don't have anyone like that. This is my uh, Stripe account. I'm currently logged into Stripe, so I think that's how it knew to pull this one. Um, otherwise, I hadn't given it any chance to know who I was. So for my sync start date, I'm actually going to pick January 1st. Then I scroll down and hit run initial sync. Go grab a cup of coffee. It says it could take five minutes. And I got some data for my sync, nine transactions with that value. That's one more than I was ex that's one more than I was expecting. So I bet what I'm looking at is my ninth transaction is one that has occurred in Stripe, but that has not been deposited into my bank account. Um, I had done a, a quick check of all my Stripe deposits and I'd only counted eight from January. So I will investigate that. Okay, now let's get back to the FreshBooks side of things. I went over here to payment payments and I am given these three options. So you wanna come over to other income. Other income is how this integration works. You can only put it there. Let's dive in a little bit deeper to each one of these transactions. Um, it is more, much more limited than if you create an invoice. Um, what It's marking it to online sales. I, I think that's fine. Um, hopefully like FreshBooks is gonna continue to build out the categories we're able to use. So for assigned to client, um, I actually have a client that I created called um, the FreshBooks Mighty Network. This will allow me to, um, for, you know, for me, I'm going to put all my expenses to that client, but if for some reason you're using Stripe for a lot of different uh, activities, you could um, manually come in and, and assign to different clients. Um, I don't need any more information here. Um, I, did, I did try to test if you could bulk categorize to client and you cannot, so I will hit pause. I'm going to categorize all of mine to the proper client and then I'll be back. So one of the next things I need to do is get those Stripe payment fees expenses in here. If you do this on a regular basis, you shouldn't have to have a lot of time, but I had so many that I wanted to import them. So just to be clear, I created this spreadsheet right here, following the FAQ on how to create a CSV for import, which is right here. You can check out that FAQ. So I'm gonna choose my file. I hit import expenses after selecting all, matching all these proper categories. It added eight expenses. Now I can reconcile. So I won't show you everything. We'll start with this first one. I selected one deposit, paired it with the fee and the gross 
deposit the uh, gross receipt and it matches so i'd like to just talk about this the way i entered the stripe fees i had dated the fees as the date of the deposit it probably should uh, match with the gross deposit it might make it clearer that's over to you though here's a great example of the mismatch february 22nd i got my money it was for this february 17th transaction i dated the fees the 22nd it's not actually right the 17th is more accurate on an accrual basis but you'll notice I have two more transactions that Stripe has imported. That the income importer says I have, but I haven't been paid. So I'm probably going to get a deposit for this like tomorrow, and I'll probably get a deposit for this in like four or five days. But for now, I'm selecting this one and this one as the match for this. So I want to make a couple more comments about the information that's in Stripe. So if you come to the Payments tab, you can get a list of all your transactions, and you can export this. Now you would think, you would think, that it have all the information you needed. However, this is what the export screen looks like. Y'all, I've hidden a lot of rows, but the fees do not match. I'll give an example here. So I'm going to use this uh, February 4th transaction as an example. I come to Balances. This one right here is going to be that one even though it was paid on the 8th uh, it's saying 5615 is in is what was deposited and that is correct but if I come here and I take this minus this it's 5675 there was an additional 60 cents of fees that's not showing up here so I can't make heads or tell the, tells of this um, in an easy way, so you just got to do it the hard way. You need to have that bank deposit is going to be on your left side of the FreshBooks Bank Reconciliation. Let's go ahead and get there. The bank deposit is going to be on this side, and on this side, you need to have the income importer bring in your transaction, and then you need to add the expenses that equal the deposit here on the left side. Sorry, you need to have the, the sum of the income importer gross gross deposit or gross income and the expense equal the, 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 thing you're, the, the transaction you're going to select over here on the left side that was actually deposited in your bank. So it's going to be pretty manual, but don't, don't, so don't get behind. That's when you're going to get messed up if you get behind. One thing that we haven't discussed is what happens when you get a refund. You're going to likely see either it's going to be netted out of your deposit or you're going to see an actual... Um, Stripe's going to actually charge your account and take that money out. When you do that, you can just mark it to an account. If you see that where they've just taken the money out of your account, you can mark it to an expense category called like refunds for uh, Stripe transactions, something like that. I got one more thing. I always got one more thing. If you go to the settings of Stripe and you come to bank accounts and scheduling, you are able to change how often you are paid. This may be something that you want to test out um, since this is still such a manual process. You could change it to a week. I probably wouldn't do it a month, uh, but change it to a week. Maybe, maybe a month would work if you only have like three or four transactions and they're just get paid once. Um, so there's always going to be problems with this, with cash basis versus, accru versus accrual, and it's going to kind of never be perfect. But I think if you start with a system and then don't change, you can just be confident that your books are going to be basically right over time. Um, and that last week of the year, that December to January time frame, when you have some sales in the end of December, and you're not getting the cash till January, um, just keep your process consistent and, and don't worry about it, and you'll be able to have a strong story for how your books are the way they are. Um, so I'm just pointing this out. If you find yourself not wanting to do quite as much work of entering those expenses on the other side, um, do the income importer, but then match it to this um, larger deposit. All right, that's my advice. I didn't really advise, right? I just sort of gave you some options. So figure out what's best for you. <laughs>
All right, I'm back to wrap it up here in my office. Um, you might notice one thing that was omitted was if you're selling anything that had sales tax layered on top, um, that wasn't demonstrated in this video. Um, if that's you, reach out. I would love to uh, take a look at your books behind the scenes, uh, give you some advice about how to handle that. I just don't have a client at this point that's doing that. So uh, that, that might be my next video is how to use Stripe transactions that actually have sales tax applied to them as well. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. That that's going to be a slight point of confusion and a, a spot where it might not potentially match up exactly with the tutorial you just watched. If you need help with your FreshBooks on an ongoing basis, please reach out. I take monthly clients, and I also have a membership for people who do their own bookkeeping. You can come to office hours once a week. We've got a great community. We talk FreshBooks. We talk business. And uh, I would love to invite you there. Um, links to all that are below. Reach out. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson, owner of Heritage Business Services, and I help businesses build their business legacy.